The semiconductor industry has gone through a wild ride over the past couple of years, going from the economy shutting down to having the supply chain bottleneck, and now going into a season where people won't be spending as much money. It really begs the question of whether or not semiconductors are actually a good buy right now. Well, not only am I buying a semiconductor, but it's probably not a semiconductor company that you've heard of before. So in this video, I want to share what this company is, what are some of the caution flags to be aware of, and I will share how big of a position I want to make this company. But I don't want to waste your time, so let's go ahead and dive right in. So the company that I will be buying here this week is called on semi this is a semiconductor company that in my opinion not only has the potential to grow substantially over the next decade but they don't have as much risk as some of the larger companies now it's important to note that just because a company is in the semiconductor industry doesn't mean that they are all in competition with one another the thing is that there are several different products that need semiconductors and so most companies don't sell to every industry and this is going to be important when we look at a company like on semi many times when we think about the top semiconductor companies the three that come to mind are are NVIDIA, AMD, and Taiwan Semiconductor. Even though a company like NVIDIA is one of the more diversified semiconductor companies, their main focuses are in gaming and data centers. Now, of course, this doesn't mean that they can't shift to other sectors, but as of now, those are their primary focuses. AMD is also similar to NVIDIA with their priorities, and Taiwan Semiconductor focuses on computing and smartphones. However, when it comes to on semi, they have two major focuses, and they are automotive and industrial. Now, there are several different aspects of the automotive market. One of these parts is ADAS which stands for Advanced Driver Assistance Systems. These systems help a driver avoid collisions while providing features like night vision, driver alertness, and cruise control that adapts depending on the situation. So thinking about ADAS, there is no question that this market will continue to grow. And I believe that we are only in the early stages because not only are cars adding cameras, which means more potential revenue, but also this kind of technology has the ability to warn drivers when they are tired. And that is only part of what ADAS does. They have three key categories for these systems and they are sensing, viewing, and in-cabin. If you want to learn more, I suggest looking at their website because they do a really good job of not only explaining what each segment does, but it really puts things into perspective the potential growth of this sector. And speaking of growth, OnSemi currently has 80% market share in the ADAS sector and 60% specifically for automotive. So when you consider how many more cars will use these kinds of products, there is no question that this could be huge for OnSemi moving forward. The second aspect of their automotive is their power. Now there are plenty of opportunities here from HVAC to the lighting to what is called a smart junction box. And as I said previously, I know you're probably here to evaluate the stock as well as why I'm buying. So if you want more information about this technology, feel free to go to their website. And I will leave a link in the description down below. Speaking of power, this leads to the last piece of the automotive market, and that is electrification. I think it's obvious that electric vehicles are going to be the future. I'm not saying that every single vehicle will be electric, but over the next decade, we will definitely see a shift from ICE vehicles to electric vehicles. And this is a massive opportunity for OnSemi. In fact, their silicon carbide products are in a position to not only make OnSemi a leader in this space, but they have shown that these products are outstanding when it comes to their performance. On November 14th, OnSemi announced that their silicon carbide modules increased the efficiency of a Mercedes-Benz all-electric vehicle to complete a 700-mile trip. Their product could extend electric vehicle ranges by up to 10%. OnSemi's product reduces power losses to increase performance. And when you think about electric vehicles, one of the biggest issues for people who travel is that the ranges on many of these vehicles are not as far and it takes a while to charge them. Plus on January 4th, OnSemi announced that their silicon carbide power module for traction inverters have been selected for Hyundai Motor Group's high performance electric vehicles. And during their corporation CES presentation, the company reaffirmed that they are on track to triple their silicon carbide revenue in 2023 from 300 million to $1 billion. The CEO also said that the company has $4 billion of committed revenue for their silicon carbide products over the next three years, which means that after this year, they would be growing at 30% year over year. And this is definitely going to be one of the main focuses for the company moving forward, as they have also doubled their fab capacity and will double it again this year and 2024 in order to execute on the committed revenue. Now, the downfall to this is that the company's gross margins will be impacted by 100 to 200 basis points for the next year or so. But these products, after everything settles, will actually be a tailwind for margins. So when you begin to add all the opportunities to together for OnSemi Automotive, we are looking at potentially $700 per car, and this could continue to 
to grow as we shift to more cameras, more sensors, and more electric vehicles and chargers. And speaking of chargers, this leads to the other main segment, and that is the industrial markets. Now I know I've spent a lot of time already on what the business does, so to try and save time for you, there are three aspects of the industrial market, and they are alternative energy, factory automation, and fast charging stations. When you think about alternative energy, there's no question that energy infrastructure is going to be key to support this expanding sector. For OnSemi, this means that their products to build solar solutions, energy storage, and power supplies are going to be incredibly important. Their factory automation is another driver of the company's growth. From robotics to power conversion, to even machine vision, these products are not only important for many companies, but the reality is that there is no question this segment has tremendous expansion potential. Lastly, let's look at EV charging. This once again is another sector that could be growing for the next decade, because as more demand shifts from ICE vehicles to EV, we will need more EV chargers, but not just any chargers. In order to get chargers that can charge more quickly, you need higher power and density charging stations that won't overheat. And this once again points to on-semi silicon carbide products because of their efficiency and thermal resistance. So when I was first looking into this company, one of my first questions was why did the company choose these specific markets and not the ones that companies like AMD and Nvidia have put their focus on over the past decade? What OnSemi has done is reduce some of their lower margin businesses and pivoted to higher margin and greater potential markets. I mean, if we look at the next decade, are any of these markets really going to slow down? When you think about the market share that they have for ADAS and the possibility to be a leader in silicon carbide, where they have proven to not only expand capacity but revenues over the past year, I see this company has put themselves in a great position for the long term. Okay, so now let's look at the company's financial position. The company as of September 30th had cash of almost $2.5 billion with over $850 million in receivables. They also have three times the number of current assets as they do current liabilities and total assets are more than double total liabilities. So the company is in a solid financial position. Now there are a couple of things that I want to mention because I think that they are important things to consider. First, if we look at the company over the past year, they did not fall like other companies. So if the market weakens more than it has already, I wouldn't doubt seeing downward pressure in this company and a few other semiconductor companies. And speaking of other semiconductor companies, they do have a couple of competitors, but the company has proven to take market share in ADAS and their silicon carbide chips. The next caution flag is that the company will be losing about 400 to $450 million in revenue for 2023 because they are exiting some of their lower margin products. So short term, this won't look good, but as I said previously, this will help their margins in the long term. Plus, the anticipated $700 million in revenue growth from the silicon carbide segment will easily cancel the losses. So even though there are potential caution flags, OnSemi has done a great job to put themselves in a position to relieve those pressures. Now, analysts believe the company will have lower EPS numbers than 2022, and I wouldn't doubt this happening, especially with the headwinds. However, I do think they won't lose as much EPS as what analysts think. But analysts also have the company decreasing in revenues this year. Personally, I don't think that they will have lower revenues given the expansion into silicon carbide, but we will have to see what the company says for guidance in the next couple of weeks. However, despite the negative views we are seeing from analysts, they have given OnSemi a price target of $74 a share. As of right now, the company is trading just under $30 billion. As the company continues to grow their revenues, margins, and free cash flow, they will be able to provide more and more value to shareholders. And with a free cash flow yield about 6% right now, this company, in my opinion, will give me another Another great risk reward stock to add to my portfolio. In terms of where this will fall into my portfolio, I would love to build this one into a probably a top five position. I will definitely pay close attention to their upcoming earnings report on February 6th so we can get a good idea of guidance, but I'm really excited to add this one to my portfolio. Hope you all enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.